They don't fall all the way off the cliff and have to play small ball. Callahan. Strong with the three. Adelphia. Even break. Three on three. Bolden pull up. Bolden is another promising freshman that Brian Gregory's recruited. He's got three freshmen that he's considered putting in the starting lineup. And Bolden is the one that did not start, but he looks poised and under control here early in this game. All-state player from high school, North Gwinnett High School. Bolden knocking down that jumper. And Georgia Tech has a three-point advantage. Callahan again. This time he gets it. First basket of the game for Jordan Callahan. He is from Marietta, Georgia. Bit of a homecoming for him. Exactly. This is the first time he's had an opportunity to play in his home state and definitely in Atlanta. So he's excited about his friends and family. Champion Holsby going to work on the block. He's a problem for opposing teams. And now the fact he's going to play against other teams back up power forward, that's definitely an advantage for Georgia Tech this year. Cherry is into the game for Tulane, wearing number four. This is Davis. These teams have quite a rivalry and a history. They first met back in 1909. Shot clock going down. They'll get the bucket there. Callahan now with four. Callahan with a very veteran move right there. The shot clock's going down. He was able to get to the basket and finish using great body control to score. Position up and under. I tell you what, Kevin Holsey's filling into this off the bench reserve reserve role very well. He looks very calm and comfortable on the block, and he's a problem right now for Tulane. Five quick points and a three-point lead for Georgia Tech inside the 13-minute mark here in the first half and a whistle. As you see, Holsey getting great position, but gathering himself and making sure to be patient on the block using the other side of the rim to finish. And he looks very poised in the one that paint. Holsey just committed his first foul of the game. See Davis and Cherry coming out for Tulane. Birchfield is in, number 13 for the Green Wave. Daniel Miller has returned for Georgia Tech as well. Here, Jordan is in there also, number two in white. Birchfield picks up the offensive foul, so the ball goes back to Georgia Tech. Another substitution as Georgia's Hunt will return to the game. Jason Morris back to the bench for Brian Gregory. You see Coach Conroy applauding. Applauding, he, he does not mind the movie screen right there because you got a teammate trying to get someone open. You sacrifice yourself for the team. Daniel Miller on the block. The baby fall away doesn't go. Tulane's won four of the last five meetings between the teams out of Conference USA. The kick out. Ripped out of there by Carter. And in midair, dished it to his teammate. Here is Bolden, who's open. And you see a little more of what Georgia Tech wants to do this year. Coach Gregory likes their depth, and he wants to push the ball up and down the floor. He wants to make sure they control the ball, don't turn it over, but he wants to give his team more opportunities to score easier baskets in transition. Another first, that is the first three pointer in the history of McCamish Pavilion. We might say that a few times. We, we could definitely say that a few times. <laughs> I'll be looking for the first blooper. <laughs> Here's Carter. Drew a double. Daniel Miller tapped it to himself, and it stripped away. But we'll get a foul on Tulane. Goes against Callahan. His first, Chris Bolden, on target from three-point range on opening night at McCamish. Stand out here at McCamish Pavilion along with our talented ACC Network production crew bringing you opening night here at McCamish Pavilion. The refurbished Alexander Coliseum up top. It's Daniel Miller on the feed from Carter. Hey, there's the first alley-oop <laughs> in McCamish history. 
We're so glad we were here to witness that. <laughs> Great play design by Brian Gregory coming out of the timeout. It gets exactly what he's looking for. Something to get the crowd into it. Now you get a turnover and another opportunity to get out on the fast break. It's a 7 0 run for Georgia Tech. Bolden. <laughs> I tell you what, Bolden is here to play. He's excited about his opportunity to come here and I think in Jacksonville, Florida. Right across the line. A, a stone's throw <laughs> from the state of Georgia. So basically, getting home for Christmas is not much of a problem here. You can practice Christmas night. <laughs> Truly, Georgia's team this season, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. And what a year it could be. And it starts tonight with the opening of this brand new refurbished building. Alexander Coliseum opening in 1956. Georgia Tech won 556 games in the old building. Here in the refurbished building, they've got a 10-point lead against the first ever opponent, the Tulane Green Wave. And do you hear that? It's the first That's air ball chant in McCabe's Pavilion. Wow. Those are some intelligent basketball fans. They are very intelligent basketball fans here at Georgia Tech. I saw Bolden out here at about 2 o'clock practicing, practicing his jump shot. Hoisted about 50 shots. Most of them went in. And most of them are going in tonight, too. <laughs> three for three so far, so he's gotten off to a good start. That practice paid off. Here's a steal. This is Timmons. Alive to the rim. That was George's hunt to attempt to save it. It will stay with Tulane. you got to like the hustle. By George Hunt getting back and not giving up the two points. And you like the freshman understanding that this is the way you have to play college basketball. And of course, first game they've had opportunity to play in two scrimmages. But you like the fact that he knows that early. And that's something that Coach Gregory preaches to his guys. It's going to be simply about the energy and the effort every night. Daniel Miller was guarding the inbounds pass, and that forced Kendall Timmons to take a timeout. That's a great defensive possession by Georgia Tech. When you make the team have to burn a timeout on the under the inbound pass, and that's a great job. Also, scout here in Atlanta, Georgia, and the Camish Pavilion. Rocking and rolling here in the first half with 10.03 to go. Again, the Green Wave winning the matchup between the teams a season ago. But that on the inside is Trey Dry with his first basket as he thunders it home. Trey Dry is an undersized forward, but however, he plays big. And you see using the athletic ability to get way above the rim. Dunking it over Daniel Miller, and he's not an easy one to get over top of. That stopped a 7-0 run for Georgia Tech. Lock inside that by Timmons. There's Udofia. Open for three. Georges Hunt. Georges Hunt is active on the interior, and he is definitely making his presence known in his first game here. He also has seven points. When you look at 14 points between two freshmen, he and Bolden, those guys have shown up to play here in their first game. Georges Hunt, freshman from College Park, Georgia. He's got six here in the first half. This is Cherry. Ben Cherry with a three. Ben Cherry from Charlotte, North Carolina, and transferred from the Citadel. Ed Conroy went to school and also coached as the head man. Daniel Miller, the jump hook, got it right back. Now the offensive rebound turns into two more points for Georgia Tech. Miller and Holsey are doing a tremendous job attacking the offensive boards. Add Georgia's hunt to that mix. And Georgia Tech probably has about 12 second chance points already in this game. Seven now for Penny and Holson. 8.25 to go in the first half. Opening night from McCamish Pavilion. Cherry, long distance. Daniel Miller on the board. Philadelphia gave up the three. Holsey. Through the contact. Yeah, you see the mismatch when you have Die trying to guard Holsey. There's such a huge size advantage for Holsey underneath. Daniel Miller making the smart play, not taking the 17 foot jump shot, but seeing the advantage that Holsey has, using a great high low pass to get it to his teammate. 
Kendall Timmons picked up the foul. The first on him, the sixth on the team. The eight minute mark. A couple of substitutions for each team here at the eight minute mark. Back into the test lineup, number 23, Brandon Reed. Brandon Reed coming back in. Jason Morris is also in there for Georgia Tech. And we get a look at Julian Royal, who wear number one for the Yellow Jackets. There's a couple of clean looking free throws right there from Kemi and Holtz. They definitely were. You're seeing a lot of the depth that Georgia Tech now has that they were missing last year. The opportunity that Coach Gregory has to get some fresh bodies into the game. Which allows him to be able to play, to play at a much faster pace. An 11 point lead, largest of the evening for Georgia Tech here in the first half. Josh Davis. I tell you what, that's surprising. That Davis doesn't really take a lot of jump shots, and you see Georgia Tech was willing to play off of him to give him that shot. I believe they would do it again. He would have to knock down a couple more before they come out there and guard. Position for Holsey. The defense came over, but you'll score the basket. It was Trey Dry who got a piece of it, but give it to Holsey, who is now into double figures with 11 points. Georgia Tech on top 28 18. So, way we have our first very special guest of the evening. Yes. It is John Sally. One of the all-time greats here at Georgia Tech. I agree. And, <laughs> and John, let's just start about all the emotions that you're feeling opening up this refurbished building. Yes. Alexander Coliseum turns into McCamish Pavilion. It, it is unbelievable that I went upstairs and had some hummus and some um, some <laughs> olives, and they were serving things. It's it's exciting. Why is my number not hanging? And how is it that these kids are that good? It's amazing. I told Coach Crimmins, I said, we had a lot to do with this. He said, not really, John. <laughs> I think you did. I think no. you did. I mean, I, I watched you play, and so therefore, I associate you with it. That means you had a lot to do. Oh, yeah, I yeah. give you that much. I'm looking at it, and this is like watching a professional basketball game. This arena is really you know when the final four comes in it's going to be unbelievable <laughs> I'm doing a three on three in the final four too. yes Something yes like you playing no. <laughs> <laughs> man let me tell you something you throw a basketball at me I might duck <laughs> that is Morris for three Jason Morris at his first basket of the game no, tell you, you've done everything. Right. Well, I've done a lot show. of things. You've right. done a lot of things. Right. You know, if you feel like you want to jump in here, do some play-by-play, -play, do some color, feel free to start doing whatever it is you feel like doing. I'm going to give you the utmost respect. So I auditioned for the Brooklyn Nets job for the Yes Network. And even though I can talk smack and make you and make people laugh at you, this is a hard gig. It is, it is much harder. And, of course, as former basketball players, we look at it and we yeah. say, okay, I can do that, right. but I tell you what, and getting into it is definitely much tougher than I thought it would be, but however, you got the pedigree to do it, no yeah. question about it. Well, it was hard to do, I won't do, I'm better at talking at halftime or at the end of the game <laughs> and making a joke about it, but like, think about this, he knows how many threes, what he said, what percentage, he has to guide people on. Well, it's really easy to do when you got, hey ref, that is not a foul, See, that's why I could not do this. <laughs> That is not a foul. It's the first time a big man stepped out on a pick and roll. You know how happy my guard would be right now if I stepped out on a pick and roll? I understand. See, and I almost cursed. Because <laughs> referees should not be alive. Josh, but, tell us more about this building and, and your memories of the older building yes. and then as we transition to the new facility. Well, the older building, we had that tunnel that came straight down this middle. Uh, uh, the reverse was the court. So uh, as we're looking at it right now, it was reversed. We sat on this side, and, and literally, Coach Crimmins would make us jump and run inside this place. And it was, you know, we only had like what nine thousand people holding to it, maybe nine thousand. We filled it every night. We had fun, but this right here looks like a professional game. It looks like a professional rink. It's entirely better. Well, you guys have a, a bunch of guys are here, and of course, Coach Crimmins is here, and. Have you had an opportunity to talk with Coach Brian Gregory and really have an opportunity to get to know some of these guys in the program? It's funny, I haven't gotten the point to talk to him about the guys in the program, but the, a funny point about Coach Gregory is I was his camp counselor at Five Star. Just to let you know, he played on my team. He was a little with us not in high school, and I was his coach. <laughs> and and he goes, yeah, man, you remember? I said, yeah, you were the white kid that can shoot. He goes, how do you remember that stuff? I said, I, said, I like winning. <laughs> and so does he. Yes. And it, this building definitely can help him do so. And like I said, this is a, a great, 
facility and recruiting to it just makes you think back to imagine what you could have been yeah. if you had something like this. Yeah, huh? imagine I would have been a pro or that, something. Yeah, you might have, you a might have like made, made a name for yourself. <laughs> Didn't you believe it? And you know what's funny? Uh, when I'm watching these kids play and you talk about Coach Gregory, this is a great recruiting tool. I had to literally convince people to come to Atlanta. And I used to say, I really shouldn't have to convince you to play in Atlanta, Georgia. And I would say, is there any other city you want to go to? And they went, well, you know, North Carolina. North Carolina closed down at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> you don't want to go there. And plus, you want a degree, right? You don't want to work at Walmart <laughs> without. <laughs> you don't want to work at. You do want to work at Walmart. Let me get it right. <laughs> but you don't want to work at Walmart with, with a ceiling above you. And hence why hence you're why. not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> No, this is a, this is a, I'm just telling you, as I'm watching and feeling it, it's the energy in this place is done. Walk around campus has grown up as well. So, yeah. Uh -oh. Okay. Daniel Miller tried to stop the shot, but he get a foul on the play against Reed. Ref called a blocking foul here, a charge down at our side. Once again, referees are human, subhuman, but human. <laughs> hey, John, like a true professor. John, we so appreciate you spending some time with us oh, and sharing your memories and, yes. and your jokes as well. And we, we really appreciate it. And so you kick him out. Well, okay. well, we hope you enjoy yes. all your nice way of saying John the arena. <laughs> uh, but we have really enjoyed you coming by. Uh, I really appreciate it. And good uh, luck. It's always a pleasure. All right, it's great to see you, that. folks. That is John Sally, one of the all-time greats from Georgia Tech. Thank you, John. We go under five minutes to go here in the first half. Georgia Tech with the basketball. And we thank John Sally for his time as Daniel Miller gets fouled, going to the bucket by Josh Davis. You know, it's, it's too bad John Sally won't open up a little bit more and have some fun with us. <laughs> I tell you what, you know, that that is one guy we cannot have on the sidelines because we cannot <laughs> concentrate on talking about basketball with him. He is oh, one amazing. of the most fun people I've ever had the opportunity to be around. I mean, even during games, playing against him. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was hilarious on the court. I mean, it is amazing how how hilarious this guy is. You can't take two steps around here, especially without being Asked for an autograph or a picture, and he certainly obliges all the time. Yeah, John Sally, just just one of the greats that are in the building yeah, tonight. Yeah, a great ambassador for this Georgia Tech basketball program, and I mean, there's so many of them here tonight, and you know, hopefully, we get an opportunity to see many more of them. And you certainly want to stay with us at halftime as we celebrate Georgia Tech basketball with over 100 former star players and coaches who are on hand tonight to open up the Camish Pavilion. This is the grand opening. Game number one. The women will begin here on Sunday against Tennessee. But this one tonight opens up. Brand new. The Camish Pavilion. Refurbished. Alexander Coliseum. Ball out of bounds. Back to Georgia Tech. Ed Conroy from 2006 to 2010, the head coach at the Citadel out of the Southern Conference and the 09 Conference of the Year coach of the year. Morris couldn't handle the pass out of bounds. Yeah, I tell you what, great play design by Coach Gregory. However, they had the back door wide open. Morris couldn't handle it. And if he would have, we would have seen a highlight dunk. One of the better athletes in the ACC. I'll be thinking about what would have happened just now. And Tomas so for Tulane, Josh Davis is out of there. He is the leading scorer so far. He has to sit with two fouls. He has 11 points. This is Callahan. He approach four minutes here in the first half. Ruha against Miller. Miller got a piece of that one. Adding to that block shot total. Miller doing a great job controlling the paint for Georgia Tech. Had about two and a half blocks per game. Second best for the conference last year. Shot clock to two. Callahan difficult shot. Over the top is Carter for the rebound. Reed. Miller trying to get it down to Carter. In traffic. I believe that's Robert Carter's first basket as the freshman. He's getting involved in the action now. And, of course, 
You're always excited for a freshman to get the first one to get those jitters out of the way. His other two partners didn't take any time, but he got he finally gets into the book here at the end of the first half. First team all state in high school for Robert Carter out of Thomasville, Georgia. Tarrant went to the deck. Tulane keeps it alive. Again, the shot clock goes inside of 10. Tarrant on the drive. And that's one of the first times Tarrant has gotten moves. They've done a great job keeping him in check early in this game, especially for a guy that's such a big score. That just his first field goal of the game. Morris tried to answer, couldn't do it. The one thing about Tarrant, he's had, had the huge half. He had 20 points in the first half against Georgia Tech last year, and then going to SMU last year had 29 in the second half. So they have to be very careful not to let him get loose, especially in the second half. Last year, a five-point win for Tulane in New Orleans against Georgia Tech as Brunhoff got Miller in the air, tried to follow his miss, Georgia Tech basketball. Could not connect with the slasher Morris. So we'll take a timeout. It is Georgia Tech on top 34 26. That are great recall the taste and zero calories. So I'm warming along with Corey Alexander and our outstanding ACC Network production crew here in Atlanta, Georgia. Ricky Tarrant leading the score last season. For the Tulane Green Wave, close to 15 points per game. Just four so far tonight. And just one field goal made. He's had a couple of free throws as well as he was fouled taking a three pointer earlier in the first half. I'll tell you an interesting number. Right now, Georgia Tech sits on 36 points. The last time we saw them for real in the ACC tournament, they scored 36 points in a full game. And here they are, two minutes left to go in the first half with 36 points. I believe this is a different Georgia Tech team we're watching this year. Yeah, Corey, that was a loss to Miami in the first round of the ACC tournament. As the shot clock gets inside of 10 out of 5 for Tulane. Callahan trying to create. Birchfield got the rebound, but pushed off.